This is part 60 of JavaScript tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss prototype object in JavaScript with an example. Here, we have an employee constructor function that constructs an employee object. There are several ways in JavaScript to add a function to this employee object. One way is by using this keyword. So here, get name is a function and we want this function to return the name of the employee. So here this represents an instance of this function which is an employee object. Now let's go ahead and create two employee objects. Alright, now let's print the names of employees. We have this function get name, so let's call that. And let's also append HTML break so we get the names printed on a separate line. So e2.name equals e2.getName. Let's save these changes, load the web page. Notice that we get employee one and employee two names is expected. So our function is working. But the problem with this approach is that, you know, if you create 100 employee objects, then there will be 100 copies of this function. So here we are creating two employee objects, so there will be two copies of this function. You know, like any other object-oriented programming language, we don't want to be creating copies of functions. Instead, we want to share the same function code across all objects, and that's possible using the prototype object. We'll discuss an example of using prototype in just a bit, but let's explore the other options of adding a function to employee object. So one way is by using this keyword within, uh, you know, the constructor function. The other way, so let's remove this. Now the other way is to associate the function directly with an object. So here we have two employee objects, E1 and E2. So I can say E1.getName equals function return this.name. So basically, if you have created 100 objects, then you have to associate to each of those objects, you know, uh, a function like this manually. So that's going to be tedious and error prone. Now at the moment, we only have added this function to E1 object. Now that means when we say E2.getName, it's going to throw an undefined error. So let's save these changes and let's reload this page. Notice that E1 name is printed, but when it tries to call E2.getName, you know, we have an undefined error. It says object doesn't support property or method get name. And the other way is you can use the name of the constructor function. So this is the second approach which we have just discussed. And the third approach is by using the name of the constructor function. So the name of the constructor function here is employee. So I can say employee dot get name equals function return this dot name and we can delete this from here. Now the problem with this approach is that get name you know will throw an undefined error. You won't be able to access this get name function. Look at this when we try to load this page it says object doesn't support property or method get name. We can use the prototype property to associate a function as well. So employee dot prototype dot get name. So we are associating get name function with the employee object using the prototype property. There are several advantages of using the prototype object. One of the advantages is no matter how many objects you create, functions are loaded only once into memory. So even if you create 100 employee objects, there is going to be only one copy of get name function which will be shared by all the employee objects. 
and using prototype also allows you to override functions if required. We'll discuss inheritance and overriding functions in our next video session. So now notice this when we load this page it should work as expected. So here we are using the prototype object. Thank you for listening and have a great day.